What I learnt from my first attempt at stand-up comedy. From The C Method, my name is Christina Cantors and this is Stand Out, Get Noticed, the podcast that helps you communicate with confidence and clarity so you can make awesome connections, build strong relationships and get what you want in business and in life. To subscribe to the show and download the back catalogue, go to thecmethod.com slash podcast. Hi there, Rockstar listener, and welcome to episode 11. My name is Christina Cantors. I am your host, and I just want to say a big thank you for joining me this week on the show. Now, I had such a great response from my rejection episode, which, if you haven't listened, is at the cmethod.com, the cmethod.com slash rejection. And it's because of that that I've been inspired to share more stories with you. Yes, stories and lessons that I've learned on my own journey towards becoming more confident and achieving things that I never thought possible. And I like sharing these stories because if I can do it, it means that you can do it too. In this episode, I'm sharing a story of how I performed stand-up comedy for the very first time at an open mic night when I was living in New York City last year. Yep, yeah, that's right, stand-up comedy. I'm Now, I'm all about doing little things to push yourself out of your comfort zone, but this scared the absolute crap out of me. Now, never in my life had I ever, ever considered doing a stand-up gig, but I managed to do it, and I have the audio from that performance, which, as much as it pains me, I will play for you. So that's coming up. You can find show notes for this episode at thecmethod.com slash standup. Now, just real quick, I have three shout-outs that I'd like to make. The first shout-out this week goes to DJ Rom1, who left an amazing podcast review. He says, love this podcast, love the content, and definitely a must for those starting a business and looking for tips and hacks when trying to make a mark. This and the Tim Ferriss Show are my go-to podcasts at the moment. Wow, thank you so much, DJ Rom1. I can't believe you just mentioned my show and Tim Ferriss's show in the same sentence. <laughs> Really appreciate that. The second shout out goes to Jared Morris, who on his showrunner podcast this week, I believe it's episode 10, he named my podcast as his podcast recommendation of the week, which I am so, so excited about. I woke up and I heard it and I was like, ah! Jared and his co host, John Nasta, they run this podcast, which is all about podcasting. And I got to say, it's one of my favorites. And I'm not just saying that. The content is amazing and these guys have great chemistry on the show. So that's the showrunner podcast, which you can find at rainmaker.fn. That's F-N-N for uh, nunchuck. If you're listening, Jared and John, thank you so much for your support. You guys rock. And finally, a shout out to Vittorio, who is a podcast listener and who is also doing my 21-day confidence building course. Now, one of the lessons in the course I share is to never leave your occupation naked. And I have naked in air quotes there, meaning if someone asks what you do, you don't just say, I'm a teacher or I'm a marketer or I'm a designer. Don't, in other words, like, you know, don't leave it naked with nothing on it. Add something on to explain further what you do or add an interesting fact. Now, Vittorio wrote to me and he shared his add-on, quote, I'm a highway engineer. You know all of America's crumbling infrastructure you keep hearing about? I try to fix it. So let's raise the gas tax. I thought that was quite a positive spin to put on paying more tax. Thanks for sharing that, Vittorio, and keep up the great work. Now, if you too want to learn how to talk about yourself and clearly explain what you do with confidence, jump on the free 21-day course at freeconfidencecourse.com. Too easy. Alrighty, let's get to today's story, which is all about how I did one of the scariest things I could ever imagine doing. Stand-up comedy. So there I was, standing on a tiny stage in a dark room, with a microphone in my hand and blinding lights in my face. I couldn't see the audience, but they could see me. I felt totally exposed. My task was to make them laugh. My goal was to make it through the next five minutes without crying, crumbling, or having beer cans hurled at my face. How on earth did I get myself into this situation? 
Okay, let me backtrack a bit. I was living in New York City at the time, and not knowing anyone, I made it my mission to attend as many events and meetups as possible. One event was a workshop run by the National Speakers Association. The guest speaker was former stand-up comedian Judy Carter. The topic? How to add humour to your speech. Judy was amazing. She was so entertaining. She showed us how anyone could be funny, and she taught us some joke formulas that we could use in any situation. A lot of the stuff I learned from her, I still use in every single speech or presentation that I give. A few weeks after that session, I went to a full day speaking workshop with Judy. It was there that I met a woman called Helene, who was a comedian and joke writer. We got talking and she said, you like comedy? I'm going to an open mic night tonight. You should come. I said, yeah, sure. I'd love to see you perform. She goes, no, no, you should perform too. (laughs) Yeah, right. There was no way I was going to attempt comedy. Come on, Helene said. It will be over before you know it. Just get up and tell some stories about your life. You won't know anyone, so why not? You'll be fine. There are lots of beginners there. Don't worry. Well, after my initial recoil had passed, I took some time to think over it. And as I did, I came to the realisation, the fact that it scared me meant that I had to do it. Yeah. The fact that it scared the absolute bejesus out of me meant that I had to do it. And as I had this thought, do you know what happened? My fear began to turn into excitement. I thought, I I do have stories to share. What what if I did pull this off? Is there a possibility that I could actually enjoy it? And if I did, how exhilarating would that be? And I started to get really excited. Now, with a few hours to go before the before the gig, I got a call from friends of mine whose family were visiting them from Australia, and we were going to plan to catch up. They asked what I was doing that evening, and without thinking, I said, "Oh, I'm going to this open mic night. Hey, hey, you should totally come along." And they said, "They said we're going for dinner, so maybe we'll pop in after after that." After I hung up, I thought, "OMG, why did I do that?" I'm supposed to be, I was supposed to be anonymous at this gig and now I just invited six people who knew me. I was kind of hoping that they wouldn't show up. Anyway, the workshop with Judy Carter ended at about 5.30pm. The comedy club was about a 20 minute walk away. I decided to walk there, alone, so I could scroll down some jokes along the way. 20 minutes. That's all I had to create a five minute set. The fact that it was so soon meant that I barely had time to think about it. It was a good thing, though, because I had no time to work myself up or talk myself out of it. In hindsight, this was a very good thing. I got to the club. It was small and dark, really dark, with about 20 people in the audience, most of whom were going to be performing. I put my name down on the set list and I sat back to watch the other comics. Now, can I just say that in New York City, The standard of any sort of act or performance is incredibly high. I mean, that's where all the entertainers go to make it, right? So for a dodgy little midweek open mic night, the standard, I thought, was incredibly high. Some of these guys I would have paid money to watch a solo gig. I felt quite intimidated. I'll just tell you some jokes. So, um... What you're hearing in the background is my friend Helene, who did her set. wearing the pens. That's pretty odd. And, um... Now, in between each comic, the host, her name was Ricky, she would introduce the next person and she'd keep the crowd cheering and laughing. About halfway through the evening, the door to the club opened and a group of people came in. Ricky immediately said, Wow, who is this? Where, where are you from, guys? And they said, Australia, we're here to see Christina. Oh, my God. It was my friends. Christina, Ricky said. Where is Christina? And I kind of put my hand up. She was like, no pressure. Half of Australia's here to see you. (laughs) Oh, man. I mean, I I was happy to see them, but I kind of wish they'd stayed at dinner. Anyway, nothing I could do about it now. Eventually, it was my turn. Ricky, Ricky announced, Australia, this is what you've been waiting for. And then I had to get up. Okay, so I'm going to play my set for you, which Helene kindly recorded for me. Now, just a heads up, there is some swearing in here, so fast forward a few minutes if you don't want to hear it. 
okay? Expletives, coming up. But otherwise, enjoy. Keep us uh, being rolling. Australia, so you've been waiting for. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the whole time. Give it up for Christina. Yeah. Christina. Christina. Thank you so much. And thank you, Helene, for dragging, I mean, inviting me here tonight. This is my very first open mic. <laughs> Because you know, she, she, Helene told me, you know, you're not gonna know anyone, so it's fine. You're talking in front of strangers. Half the fucking room is here. <laughs> Thanks, Australia. <laughs> but these, these are actually, they're actually my friends. <laughs> so yeah, this is just, this is ridiculous. I can't, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. No pressure from us. <laughs> oh my god. And it's, you're right. I can't see your bloody thing up here. <laughs> no. Anyway, look, I'm really excited to be here. Like New York, right? Cool. <laughs> seen here, they're just, just, I've never seen so many tiny dogs in my life. Some of them I'm like, you know what, you, you like you belong in the, the shower puff section at Dwayne Reed. You know, it's like, you kind of want to just... Like, <laughs> so at that point I made an action like I was picking up a dog and wiping it under my arms. Yeah, the visual's totally funny. Okay, on with the show. Um, you know, I am actually Malaysian by the way, is, is Tino here? Tino's gone. Oh, well, <laughs> well, I was just going to tell him that, you know, I know exactly where my black box is. Yeah, <laughs> really yeah. 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 But I'm just not going to tell you where. Alright. <laughs> yeah, so look, I've, I've moved here from Australia. I've only been here for eight weeks. And uh, I've, only been, I've only been shot at twice. <laughs> and I was only sitting on the grass at Madison Square Park. It's like... Welcome to New York! Come enjoy our lovely park! Don't fucking sit on the grass! Get off the grass! Seriously, like, in Australia, if it's grass, like, you're allowed to sit on the grass in the park. I just don't get it. Why are you not allowed to sit on the grass in the park? Like, seriously! It's funny when you listen back to yourself and you realise you're saying things you never even thought you, you'd said. Turns out I say, like, seriously? I say that a lot. Anyway. No, I, mean, I, I love it here. I love, I love Americans. Like, they are just so... They're just so encouraging, so happy, you know. I tell them what, they, what I'm doing here. I'm like, you know, I quit my job. I'm, I moved to New York City. I'm here pursuing my dreams. And they say, good for you. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm so happy for you. It's great. You know, you know when I get back home? When back home, I was like, guys, this is what I'm doing. I'm quitting my job. I'm moving overseas. I'm following my dreams. And they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, thanks, mum. <laughs> no, my mum, my mum's really interesting actually. She, um, you know, I told her about my plans. Like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow my dreams. I'm gonna go travel the world. She says, Christina, just marry a rich man. <laughs> then you can travel the world as much as you like. <laughs> I'm like, what? She, seriously, she cares more about my financial stability than actually finding true love. Can, can you imagine my mum as a programmer? She'd probably create a dating app where you, instead of flicking through people's faces, you flick through their income reports. You know, 8K, no, 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 100, maybe, you know, just terrible. But, I know we've talked a lot about Tinder tonight, right? I'm, I'm, I'm actually not on Tinder. I don't have time for that shit, I just don't, like, I just don't, I don't want to be going on a date with some, I don't want to waste my time with some, you know, random person that I just don't know how it's going to go down at all. Uh, oh, or him. Anyway, um, <laughs> but did you, <laughs> now there's another reason I don't, you know, the thing with Tinder is that, like, did, like, I mean, did you know, I mean, you may not know this, but Tinder is actually a Latin term for I'm in desperate need of validation. <laughs> okay, it wasn't going too badly. I was nearly done. All right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna end this real quick with, um, you know, you, you Americans like, 
we in, in Australia, like we have this perception that you're all like really fat, right? It's like, <laughs> we, it's on the news, you know, America's like the fattest country. Australia, we were actually, we were up there once, like we were quite fat as well, but I think you've sort of overtaken us again. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's not, but I mean, really, I came here and I was like, well, you know, it's, it's not hard to really see why, really. I mean, you've got huge slices of pizza, Ooh. your coffee cups are bigger than my head. Yeah. Like, seriously. <laughs> and you can buy alcohol from the pharmacy. <laughs> seriously? Alcohol from the pharmacy? The place that's meant to be making you better? And healthy? How does that get that? It's like you go in there to get your, uh, you know, you, to get your painkillers for your headache from, from your hangover from the night before. It's like, oh, well, may as well start all over again. Anyway, that's from me. I'm just going to say thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, and Ricky did warn me at the end that I would need to watch my accent or I would be pregnant. <laughs> oh dear. So anyway, it was actually a lot of fun. I felt amazing afterwards too. I had like a, I can't believe I just did that feeling. I was so pumped though. I couldn't, I couldn't get to sleep. I mean, forget coffee. If you ever need to get your heart racing, go do five minutes of stand up. Now, I attribute all my joke writing semi skills to Judy Carter, who is one of my favorite speakers. So thank you, Judy, for for teaching me those. And I have to say a massive thank you to Helene for encouraging me and pushing me really to come along and do it. Now, would I do it again? Absolutely. And when I do, you'll be hearing about it. Now, no story of mine is complete without the lessons I learned. Today, I have three learnings from my first attempt at stand-up comedy. Lesson number one, if you want to get more confident at speaking in front of people, make it a habit to speak at every opportunity. Just do it. So maybe you're in a fitness class and the trainer asks someone to demonstrate. Put your hand up. If you're in a lecture, ask a question. Who cares what the answer is? It's the speaking as practice that counts. Or if you're at dinner with friends, take a few minutes to stand up and say how much you appreciate them. Can you hear that tram in the background? Anyway, moving on. These little things will make a difference. It's like practice. Think about it as practice for a bigger, more high-pressure situation. Now, without doing these sorts of little things along the way, I would have never had the confidence to do a stand-up gig. Lesson number two. If something scares you, turn that fear into excitement. So instead of focusing on the potential of being publicly humiliated, I focused instead on how I just really wanted to share my funny stories about my experiences in New York. And with that attitude, the open mic night turned into a great opportunity. Lesson number three, there is nothing like the feeling of exhilaration you get when you've accomplished something you originally thought to be impossible. Like I said at the start of this episode, never in my wildest dreams had I ever even considered doing stand-up comedy. But coming off that stage, I felt like I could achieve anything. And when was the last time you had this feeling? It is amazing. It is such a high. So there's another reason to get out there and do stuff that scares you. So there's three lessons from me. And of course, I have a challenge for you. And this is from lesson number one. I challenge you to take every opportunity to speak in front of people, whether it's your friends or at a work meeting or in a class. Take it slow. Start small. These small wins will help you build up confidence to take on bigger things. Look, if I can manage to work up to doing stand-up comedy, you too can work up to overcoming your own speaking fears. And that's no joke. (laughs) And that brings us to the end of episode 11. You can find show notes at thecmethod.com slash standup. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to spend with me. I really, really appreciate it. Again, if you want to learn my tips and tricks for talking about yourself and explaining what you do, join my free 21-day confidence building course at freeconfidencecourse.com to sign up. Too easy. 
Alright, the song you're hearing right now on the ukulele, it was a tricky one. It's Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. I felt like I needed a fast, empowering song for this episode, seeing as it was such a overcoming fear kind of episode. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening and I will see you next week. Take care. My name's Christina Cantors and this has been Stand Out, Get Noticed. Stop me, don't stop me, don't stop me. Don't stop me, don't stop me. Hey, hey, hey. Don't stop me, don't stop me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't stop me, don't stop me. Have a good time, good time. Don't stop me. Oh, yeah.